Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Nobody ever comes here. Beginning with Mario Bava's Black Sunday, English actress Barbara Steele popped up in a series of Italian horrors in the 1960s, some of which have become classics. Others, like Terror Creatures from the Grave, just have memorable titles. No! Accursed murderers! That said, subscribers will know I'm a sucker for this kind of high gothic. Yes, the moment he'd been expecting. And this is by no means the worst film we've reviewed. I know it's very easy for you to joke about this subject. I'm just saying that up front because people get angry without watching the whole review. Do you take these things seriously? Mm. Attorney Albert Kovac is invited to meet with Geronimus Hauf, but when he arrives and is met by Hauf's wife... My husband has been dead for a year. He also meets Hauf's daughter, Corrine. Why don't you tell him the truth about my father? That truth involves the plague burial ground on which their house is built. This is a place of horror where thousands of men have died. And Hauf's occult experiments with them. A lunatic who endeavoured to summon the souls of the ancient dead. Which didn't make him popular with the locals, and I imagine his choice of decor didn't improve things. These are the mummified hands of men who were executed because it was believed they were spreading the Black Plague. Still better than those flying ducks. Alone in his room later, Kovac reiterates everything via some internal monologue. Here I am, a guest in an old hospital for plague victims, summoned by a dead man to draw up his will. This voiceover is wholly unnecessary and irregular enough that each time it returns you wonder who the hell is speaking, particularly when he has his back to the camera. What a strange creature. He has such a faraway look. Just seems like he's being really rude. Somehow I sense he dislikes me. Maybe because I keep staring at him. Next day, Kovac's car won't start. There's an owl caught in the engine. There's an owl caught in the engine. OK, there's an owl caught in the engine. Don't know whether to call a mechanic or a vet, but that would explain the hooting noise during my drive up here. Half's daughter, Corrine, thinks her father is still alive. He had powers beyond the world of men. And she's not the only one. The day of revenge is coming. Revenge for what? How did he die? He was drinking one night with his friends. He was drunk and fell down the stairs. I'll show you. That's the official version. But now, others are turning up dead. I hereby state that death is attributed to... Uh, heart failure. Then he fell over and knocked acid into his face. Yeah, that'll do. Now, one thing I've learned from years of Dark Corners is that nothing enlivens a slightly staid film more than a good prophet of doom. The corpse collectors always come when somebody's doomed to meet his fate. He's only in this one scene, but he makes the most of it. He was one of those present at the death of Geronimus Hauf. They're all marked to die. As we learn about the five witnesses to Geronimus's accident. Three of them are dead. The others haven't long to wait. That does seem a coincidence. Coincidence? But why would these five, all friends of Geronimus, wish him harm? They said they were friends of his. Instead, they hated him because he dabbled in the occult. So, there's your plot. Is Geronimus Hauf coming back from the dead to take vengeance on the five witnesses? But of course we all know the dead don't come back to life. Is he dead at all? If Geronimus is dead, there must be a reason for these machinations. And the plot thickens when we learn... No one ever saw the body of Geronimus dead, not even his wife. So, the five people who saw him die also decided to bury the body immediately before anybody else had seen it, and nobody questioned that? The grave is empty. Then he isn't dead after all. Oh, the internal monologue's back. I could I tell, tell the people from around here. Save yourself. He summoned you too. Oh, great. Now he's got more voices in there. Here's the thing about terror creatures from the grave. It's all there. 
the gothic eeriness, the plague graves, forbidden love, noises in the night. I, I heard a noise. I thought it might be a burglar. Perhaps it was only the fish. We have a very noisy fish. It's got the obligatory flashback to the original murder. But I'll expose all of you. You're finished. I hope nobody's creeping up behind me. It's even got Barbara Steele in the bath. Oh, Kareen. Would you mind, dear? It's all there. And it just doesn't come to life. This is not what I had hoped for. Nor does it completely come together. It's impossible to explain it. As the ending rolls around, it becomes clear that there are two things going on. Firstly, Geronimus's servant, Kurt, has been carting his master's corpse around to create the illusion he's still alive. So it's Kurt, I assume, who forged the letter summoning Kovac, though I'll be damned if I understand why. Punishment will strike the innocent and the guilty alike. But literally 10 seconds after that scene, it's over for you. Kurt suddenly contracts the plague as the title finally comes good. The plague spread as of five centuries ago. Have emerged from their graves. Not that we get to see them. Looks like he summoned Bugs Bunny. Should have turned left to Albuquerque. So, Geronimus has posthumously raised the plague dead to take vengeance on the five, actually turns out to be six, people who wronged him on the one year anniversary of his death. My vengeance will find you wherever you are. But, four of the six are already dead. We already saw the acid in the face. Another one is kicked by a horse. Another has an off-screen heart failure, although the definition of heart failure around here does seem to be a somewhat loose one. And there is one suicide, although the nature of the suicide is significantly different in the US dub. to the original Italian version. Anybody else wondering how he did that? None of them seem to have been killed by the plague dead, but truthfully, I don't know what happened to them. Might just be a coincidence. Coincidence? Love that guy. Bottom line. You wait the whole movie for vengeful terror creatures to rise from their graves, and when they do, we don't get to see them, and two-thirds of their job has already been done. No! It's still Barbara Steele being iconic, but it could have been so much more. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For more Euro horror, click here. Along with Barbara Steele, who are the great female icons of horror? Let us know your suggestions in the comments below. Also, am I missing something? Does anyone know who killed the other four witnesses? Anyone? Leave the villa at once you've got to. It's a place of death. Save yourself before it's too late. <laughs>